Is this guy breaking stereotypes with his hilarious takes on sharing culture? Let's get into it. Yeah, we are talking about Chris Cares None on TikTok. Let's run the clips. Hey, white people, when would you gonna let us know about golden retrievers, huh? When you gonna let us know about golden retrievers and how great they are, how sweet they are? How, we y'all gonna let us know? These might be the sweet, these are the sweetest dogs. They're so sweet, so sweet. This is Zoe, y'all. We like golden retrievers too. Hey, white people, when was y'all gonna tell us about these? Y'all wasn't gonna tell us about these? Y'all think we don't want to be comfortable when we run into? So come to find out, these were created in 2009 from France. And some dude named Nicolas Mermoud and Jean-Luc Griard, but the, the material they use in is really soft and really light. So I'll be doing a little bit of running. I know a lot of blacks we don't just be out here just running like that, especially not in Chicago. But you know, I do a little bit of running. I, I have never seen one non-white person wearing these. So these is definitely a secret. And I had to find this out on page 17 at the bottom. Hey, white folks, when were y'all gonna tell us about whip ricotta? Y'all didn't think we was gonna like whipped ricotta, get a little crustini, put the little honey on it. You didn't think we was gonna like that? And y'all don't think we wanted to add, first of all, what's that little thing with the honey, the, the, the honey, what's it called, a honey dipper? Why does those look so fancy? Huh? I've never seen one of those in real life and I've never seen it for nothing else. Hold on. And I bet here, here's another thing y'all don't tell us about. The real honey. The honeycomb. Why y'all didn't tell us about this? And look, there's that honey thing, that, that the honey dipper. Why y'all never tell us about the good stuff? And this like a low key one at the house. You can tell this ain't even like a gourmet one, but tell me that don't look good. Got the nuts on there. Got a little, got a little cracked pepper, huh? Y'all gotta stop gatekeeping the good stuff. I, I want a bite. I want a bite today. Boom. Okay, as you can see, Andrew, he's talking about golden retrievers, Hoka running shoes. De white people definitely wear a lot of those, and whip ricotta with honeycomb. I mean, I will say this to me. Uh, there's some debate about this TikToker. Say, some people saying he's like breaking stereotypes. Some people saying he's confirming it. But to me, I really like his attitude about playing with culture and just doing things that people who think, oh, you look like this from a certain community, you wouldn't know about that. So anyway, guys, we're going to break it down. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Out Sauce at SmileOutSauce.com. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is this guy, Chris Cares, not Andrew, he's trying to show that what? Black people from the south side of Chicago, I believe that's where he's from, could still like some things that are considered almost exclusively reserved for the white middle upper class. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's pretty funny the way he's talking about it. Oh, yeah. And the way he frames it obviously is in a jokingly way of like, oh, white people, you're gatekeeping this. How could you not tell us about this? Or Latino people, how could you not tell us about this? Obviously, nobody was really keeping stroop waffles and golden retrievers away from black people. But it's just... Those are things, I guess, less commonly found in like a black home. So I guess that's why it's funny. And it's like, they're, they're, you know, with every piece of racial comedy, I think that there's a little bit of stereotypes, but then most of it is kind of upending it and kind of opening it up. Yeah, I mean, we grew up in a pretty conservative not conservative politically, but I guess conservative in terms of uh, behavior or spectrum of culture that they were exposed to, Chinese church. And I would say the same thing. So Andrew, I came up with a list of things that I wanted to say to the Chinese community oh. or the Asian community. Oh, you mean 10 things that you wish the Asian community would get on and be exposed to from other cultures. Right, right, right. Um, and like I and said- And this is a comedy list. Yes, yes, yes. By the way, um, this guy, Chris Cares None, he's not just talking about like white American culture. Here's that video about Stroop waffles that you said. Hey, Dutch people, when was you gonna tell us about these Stroop waffles, huh? Y'all didn't think the rest of the world would like these? These are delicious. Y'all have to stop gatekeeping too. I got y'all booked too. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Until you try this, damn, broke the bag. Now, first, I'm going to eat one or eat like a bite of it. Fire. It's like caramely. It's like, it's dense. It's, 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 this is actually substantial. It's not like a wafer. It's dope. Wow. Dutch, y'all snapped on this one. Y'all got to start sharing here. Hold on, let me get some coffee. I also think it's interesting that a lot of, and or some people accused him of trying to get famous by just being a black guy, liking things that a black guy would not normally like. And this was his response to that. This guy just used our culture to make himself famous and you geniuses fell for it because he praised your culture. The problem with this is 
I talk about every culture all the time. So it's not like just specifically your culture. But that's just who I've always been. Anybody who's been following me since day one, when I started on Instagram, I've always talked about all cultures. I've always included everybody. I've always been that way. Anyone who knows me, I would like for y'all to comment. I've always been that way. I've always shown love. I was the prom king in high school. And I think the reason why is because I showed everybody love. I was cool with everybody. So I normally don't respond to dumb shit. But if there's anyone else that feels this way, don't. Don't. Because before, before I was making this content, I've always, always embraced every damn body. There's not a hateful bone in my body. No more of these. Maybe when I was younger. But nowadays, I'm always trying to spread love. Because to me... It feels better to be, mind you, mind you, ultimately, I like to live a life that feels easy and joyful. Overall, guys, I think it's just like, there's some people who act so colorblind, like culture doesn't matter. And then I, I just like it the way he's saying it. Like, yes, people who look like me don't typically do these things, maybe on a probability basis, but I'm letting everybody know in my own community know that we could be on this. Andrew, here are a few things I want to say, man. Andrew, from this is from the black community, maybe to teach the Asians, but maybe they're gatekeeping, number one, dunking from us. <laughs> Do you think, not that many Asians know what it's like to dunk. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that if we get the lowered rims, maybe I always was an advocate in Chinatown. Let's get some lowered rims in there with the breakaway rims so kids could get that feeling of what it's like to dunk. Number two, Andrew, yelling from our deepest gut in public. This mm. is something that is so un-Asian. If you know about this, Andrew, in public, there is something very relieving about yelling from your deepest chakras. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I mean, can you yell right now? Hold the mic away and then just yell. Need to learn that. Asians need to do that more. And that's why I always say playing basketball is a good way to do that because obviously it's not publicly acceptable to act that way except under a few, you know, instances. Uh, number three, Andrew, why are they gatekeeping Caribbean food and by extension, Puerto Rican, Dominican, or Cuban food? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Asians really like these types of foods when they do get to eat them. I mean, especially being in closer proximity to it out in New York City. I mean, it's pretty good. And, and there's actually a lot of crossover. I mean, Dominicans and I think Puerto Ricans, they still eat the crispy rice, which is similar to boat siphon. Right, right. Some chaufa from Peru. I know that's not Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Andrew, Pete Wells, uh, critically acclaimed New York food reviewer, was saying that his favorite food in NYC right now is Asian food and Caribbean food. Mm. Um, here's something that I think Latinos are gatekeeping, Andrew. How come Latinos didn't tell us how fun it was to dance and show romance in public. No, oh, man. Latinos in PDA, they have been gatekeeping that. But <laughs> I mean, not really, but yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but wouldn't you say Asians are super not on that? Maybe, you know, Asians do the hugging, but I'm talking about just kissing on the grass. Yeah. I love it. Um, not needing a lot of money to turn up. Uh. I, I did, Andrew, would you agree with me? And I'm saying this is more of an East Asian thing than Southeast Asian thing. It's almost like people got to pop a bottle and get the best table at the club to feel somehow like, this prerequisite to like let loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you don't have to rent a karaoke room just to let loose, guys. Come on. Um, I was gonna say tacos in general, Andrew. How come like only Roy Choi has done the Asian fusion tacos? Mm. Like I'm saying that what if we did like thinner bows, okay? Because you know the bow was an Asian taco, not not as fluffy, not as much carbs, but then we put traditional dishes within the bows. Uh huh. But like. I, not just with the mayonnaise and the aioli, like all the fusion spots are doing right now. I'm just saying that could be something that Asians could get on. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we've got um, from white people, I think that we could learn to love boom bap true school hip hop. Whoa, you're saying hip hop is a white thing or no. this particular type of hip hop? Of course, guys, this has been a joke in the hip hop community that white people are the key people keeping black hip-hop that black people don't listen to anymore alive like who talib kwali mm. mos def right older artists too black milk whatever you know what i mean boom bap like right. from like 1992 right 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 that's like a style of rap that white people really like so 
Well, I'm just saying that Asians could get on it. And it's always funny because, Andrew, you'll go to, like, a Mos Def concert. He doesn't really do concerts anymore. But he's, like, talking about, like, white Anglo hegemony in the world and corporatism. And then the crowd is, like, 80% white kids whose dads are, like, corporate white business heads yeah, saying, yeah, Mos Def down with the corporations. It's kind of funny. Um, moving on, Andrew. Are white people gatekeeping New Balance shoes? What? Now, I'm saying New Balance shoes are trending for everybody in 2024, but I think that white people were never off New Balance. Oh, white people been love the New Balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's because true. it's made in America. But I do think that a lot of Asians are more on Asics because Asics is more of a Japanese brand. Oh, Andrew, I know you got to appreciate this. Number nine, Andrew. Why are white keep people gatekeeping warm feeling rustic third spaces? You know how like a lot of Asian spaces, they do look really dope. And I love the Asian design aesthetic, which is more minimalistic and more clean. I'm not saying Thai, Thai being the one exception to this. Southeast Asian spots tend to feel a little bit warm. But would you agree with me that East Asian spots sometimes design-wise or vibe-wise can feel a little cold? Mm, yeah, you like, like the restaurants or the cafes. It's like very almost more in that Swedish Japanese style where... Uh, Hyper-futuristic as yeah, well. Yeah, right? but, but it doesn't feel like it's going to come around and hug you. Right. So I'm just saying, maybe we could find a compromise between the ultra cold granite stone futuristic white clean sh year 3000 Asian design aesthetic and the warmth of the white spots. And then last but not least, Andrew, this is something that I think that people I'm not saying white people are gatekeeping it from Asians, but they might be. Taking care of their mental health. Mm, all the healing and stuff. Like actually, you know, uh, you could say traditional Chinese medicine, a lot of that stuff, or Indian kind of like Hindu or Buddhist principles that like white people kind of got it, were inspired by that, but then they use it and mix it with science, and then now it's like all health and wellness. Right, right, right. It does seem like they mix it more with the science. Andrew, we're talking about Andrew Huberman as well. Body hacking, biometrics. Right, right, right. And I mean, I guess the easiest one from like 50, 60 years ago that Asians have re more recently adopted is coffee. Right. Coffee to get your androgens, test whatever flowing in the morning. Um, but here, Andrew, I got three things that Asians might be gatekeeping from everybody else in the world. Mm. Number one, Andrew, believing in the balance of the yin and the yang in Taoism. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I think you could argue, uh, I spoke to some political candidates and they said that maybe America could use more Buddhist principles. Well, when I say Taoism or Buddhism, basically I'm talking about believing in both sides. A lot of the Western hemisphere, I noticed, Andrew, they're into demonizing and angelizing one side or the other, but they're not seeing the nuance. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys know about plants, plants need the sunlight and they need the nighttime both for photosynthesis and just to exist as a plant. That's the yin and the yang. Uh, number two, Andrew, I think the rest of the world could probably leave gas behind and get on electric personal vehicles. Mm. Asians been about electric. I mean, Japan's a little bit more on hybrid, but, and number three, Andrew, tell me if you agree with me or not, Andrew, are Asians gatekeeping being thin and Dude, just having lower BMIs? No, nah, we've been gatekeeping the smaller portion meals. That's what we've been gatekeeping, man. Like everybody else learned from America to eat these big old plates of food, but I don't know, man. People are getting back on the eating less trend. Listen, guys, we are sorry for gatekeeping the lower BMIs. It's just something you might want to take a look at. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. I think, like, as somebody who's traveled around the world, I've been to a lot of different continents, obviously, you know, big cities, been had friends from like all across the world. Man, there is such thing as culture. Yeah. And, and I do think we should mix and match and learn from each other, almost like making the best bag of candy from the global sweet factory. I think too many people are locked into like, oh, my people that look like me or raised like me in this neighborhood, we only do this limited range of things. What are some things from other cultures that you feel like they're gatekeeping in a comedic way, but what are some things that you wish your community would adopt from other cultures? Anyways, let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button, click subscribe, and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.